Hi, boys and girls. It is Tuesday of Bear Week, and I am very happy to say that I picked some of my favorite books for you to listen to on YouTube this week. Most of them are pretty funny. I did save one of my very favorite ones to read to you today, and today is the letter R for read a special book or find a new one that you haven't read. So I thought for today, I'm going to read one of my favorite stories that I've always read to my kindergartners through the years, and it's called The Bear That Heard Crying by Natalie Kinsley Warnock and Helen Kinsley, Kinsey, illustrated by Ted Rand. And there are some beautiful watercolor pictures in this book. This book was given to me by someone in my very first kindergarten class when I was over at Parkview, and he is, of course, now in his 20s, so I've read it for many, many, many years. So I hope you enjoy it. It's a little bit of a long story, but you will love, love, love how this story ends. So again, it's called The Bear That Heard Crying, and is actually based on a true story that took place over 200 years ago. So... On a warm afternoon in June 1783, that was George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, John Adams time. So on a warm afternoon in June 1783, Sarah Witcher got lost in the woods. The day began like any other Sunday. No axes rang in the great pine woods because Sunday was a day of rest. A church hadn't been built yet on Pine Hill, so Papa, Joseph, Reuben, John, Betty, and Sarah, who was only three years old, sat under the trees near the cabin while Mama read to them. It's a beautiful day, Papa said to Mama after dinner. Let's walk to the summit and see Chase and Hannah's new baby. Sarah loved her Uncle Chase. He took her for walks in the woods and showed her bobcat tracks and fox dens, and once he took her to a hollow tree on Pine Hill that bees had filled with honey. Mama put on her hat, and she and Papa walked along the path into the woods. Sarah ran after them. I'm coming too, she said. No, Sarah, Mama said. It is too far for you to walk. You must stay at home with Betty and your brothers. Sarah meant to be a good girl, but she wanted to see her Uncle Chase and the new baby. So when Mama and Papa were out of sight, Sarah followed them. She walked along Berry Brook. Brook trout swam in the deep green pools. High above her head, squirrels and gray jays scolded her. The trees grew so tall, Sarah was sure that they touched the sky. I'll pick some flowers for Aunt Hannah, Sarah thought. She was so busy looking for wildflowers that she wandered from the path into the deep woods. She ate some wild strawberries and picked bunches of wood sorrel and dog tooth violets. A bobcat leaped over a log, scaring her, but he bounded past chasing a rabbit. Sarah walked on and on. Blackberry Bramble scratched her hands and feet, and her legs were tired. I hope Papa and Mama come back soon, she thought, but Mama and Papa never came. Darkness crept into the woods. The wind moaned through the trees like a crying animal. It made Sarah want to cry just to hear it. She was too tired to walk anymore, so she sat on a mossy rock. She tried to be brave, but the woods seemed too big and too dark, and before she knew it, she was crying. She was hungry and so tired, she wanted to go home. But what was keeping Mama and Papa so long? Sarah heard branches cracking. <gasps> she held her breath listening. Something was crashing through the bushes, coming right at her. A big black head poked through the bushes. Two black eyes looked at Sarah, and Sarah laughed. A big black dog had found her, she thought. He will show me the way home. But it wasn't a dog that found Sarah. It was a shaggy bear, as black as the night. Sarah was glad to see the dog. Now she didn't feel so lonely. She patted his long brown nose and hugged him around the neck. The bear <laughs> sniffed her face. 
then licked the strawberry juice from her hands and the blood from her feet from where the blackberry brambles had scratched her. Sarah put her head on his shoulder and the bear lay down beside her. Sarah snuggled into his thick, warm fur. Papa and Mama will find me tomorrow, she thought, and she fell fast asleep. Hmm. They're all snuggled up together in the woods. Back on the path, Papa and Mama were hurrying home. The children ran to greet them. Why did you leave Sarah up at Uncle Chase's, Reuben asked. We did not leave her, Papa said. We told her to stay at home with you. She hasn't been home all day, Joseph cried. We thought she'd gone with you. Mama's face turned white. Sarah is lost in the woods, she cried. Reuben grabbed the dinner horn and bolted for the woods. Mama ran to the Richardsons, their nearest neighbors, for help. Because, of course, there were no telephones at this time. Other neighbors came, too. They shouted into the forest and built great fires, hoping Sarah would see them. But Sarah didn't come back. No one slept that night. Papa searched the woods in the dark. Mama sat by the open door all night, listening for Sarah. In the morning, the news of their lost child traveled over the mountains and valleys. All who heard it left their farms and hurried to Pine Hill. Some of the neighbors even left their oxen tied up in the fields. Joseph Patch came with his long-barreled shotgun. For three days, people searched for Sarah. Can you imagine? She's only three years old and she's been in the woods for three days. Through the darkest forests, up the mountain, down the falls, and all along the path of the river, where it tumbled out of the dark ravines along Black Mountain. But every night they returned home, hungry, tired, and discouraged that they had not found Sarah. You see beautiful watercolors, but the water's rushing. They're hollering. They're blowing horns, hoping she will hear them. Late in the afternoon, one of the men burst out of the woods. He was breathing hard from running. I, I found Sarah's footprints near Berry Brook, he said. But there were bear tracks next to them. Oh, no. She's been torn to pieces, several of the crowd said. Mama covered her face with her hands. The children looked at each other but didn't say a word. We will never find her, someone said. We might as well give up. No, said Mama, lifting her head. Don't give up yet. Please look for her one more day. The searchers were sure that the bear had gotten Sarah, but no one wanted to say that to Mama, so they all agreed to look one more day. But no one actually expected to find Sarah. At daylight, the woods filled with people again. Mrs. Richardson stayed at the Witcher cabin to bake a bushel of beans to feed the searchers. She was busy by the fire when she heard a knock at the door. A man stood there. He was dusty and tired and looked as if he'd walked a great distance. My name's Heath, he said. I can find your child. Just then, Joseph Patch came into the clearing. What makes you think you can find her when we've looked for four days with no luck, he said. Well, last evening, I heard that a little girl was lost, Mr. Heath said. Three times during the night, I dreamed I found her lying under a great pine tree where the path crosses Berry Brook. A bear was guarding her there. I don't know that I believe you, Mr. Patch said, but I will take you along the path. When the path crossed Berry Brook, Mr. Heath stopped. He looked around, then plunged through the bushes. Mr. Patch followed him, and there they found Sarah, sleeping under a large pine tree, just as Mr. Heath said she would be. And there were bear tracks all around her. I have goosebumps. 
Sarah opened her eyes and sat up. I want to go to Mama, she said. And if you look closely, look who's watching over here. It's like animals have that instinct that she would not do any harm. And he protected her. Or she protected her like she would her own little cub. Hmm. Joseph Patch fired his gun into the air then picked her up and carried her home. Everyone who, re- who met them ran ahead of them, shouting and waving their hats, and they all talked about Mr. Heath's wonderful dream. Papa and Mama heard, and heard everyone shouting and hurried back to the cabin. They heard the shouts, John, Sarah, we found her, we found her! And then they saw Sarah in Joseph Patch's arms. Mama fainted. Papa couldn't say a word. Joseph, Reuben, and John whooped and hollered, and Betty clapped her hands. Sarah's home! Sarah's home! they sang. (laughs) She must be famished, poor thing. That means very hungry, Mrs. Richardson said, and hurried to fix her some soup. Papa carried Sarah into the house. He sat in the rocker, holding her tight. Did you see anyone in the woods? Papa asked her. A big black dog stayed with me every night, Sarah said. He was friendly and his fur was warm. Papa looked at Mama and Mama looked at Papa and no one told Sarah that the large black dog had actually been a bear. Never had such a feast been prepared. Mrs. Richardson brought out her pans of baked beans and the women made venison stew, hasty pudding, and cornbread with honey. It's like they had a Thanksgiving feast, much to be thankful for. All the friends that came to help. Papa said a prayer of thanksgiving and everyone sang. All the men blew horns and they made all kinds of noise up on Pine Hill. And it was with great joy that Sarah was found. (laughs) And that is the end of the bear that heard crying. Now, how I know this is a true story is in the beginning. The author says that when the author, Natalie Kinsey Warnock and Helen Kinsey, they happen to be sisters. And they said that when Sarah was older, Sarah, the little one in the story, she wrote down what she remembered about the days that she was in the woods with the big black dog. And when the two authors were then going through some family treasures, they found that Sarah Witcher was their great, 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 great aunt and her brother, Jeremiah, who was born later on in 1790 after Sarah. He was actually their great, 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 great grandfather. So they found the memories had been written down and saved. And it says... No record was given to what happened to the bear, but the authors hoped that he live a long and contented life. So, thank you for listening to my story, The Bear That Heard Crying. It's been one of my favorites, and it warms my heart and gives me some goosebumps. So, I hope you're enjoying lots of books today yourself. Have a great day. Till later. Bye-bye.